Hello and welcome to my review of the Star Wars Episode 1 Portrait Collection Queen Amidala doll. This is the black travel gown version and this is number two out of a set of three. So this doll is from 1999 and the box is a bit beaten up so I bought this one with the intention of opening it up but before I do that I will show you the box. So on the front here We've just got a window, shows the doll. It's got an opening section with Velcro. Also here is the description of the doll. This is the international box. So you've got different languages here. This section here is the English. If you want to read that, give it a pause. There's other looks from the film. You can get this one and this one and this one. Uh, I believe there's just the three that were like in a standalone box. And then interestingly, it's got these two, but these actually never came out. So I wonder if there was intended to be another wave of them or something, and then it didn't come out. And then I believe there is a Princess Leia one, and there's also a two pack that has Qui-Gon and Queen Amidala in her like battle outfit from the end, Battle of Naboo. The guy that I bought this from said that he bought them in this condition from someone else. So I'm potentially the third owner of this. Also, I'm not sure what uh, this is, but you get 50 Jedi Master Points for this purchase if you chop this out and send it somewhere. So it's interesting that it says, to maintain authenticity and avoid damaging fragile components, it is encouraged that the costume and accessories not be removed from the doll. Um, I will be doing that because I kind of want to see all of the different elements that we have on the doll. Um, and I might even rebody it onto a more articulated doll. So yeah, let's get it out of the box. Before anyone comes at me saying, why are you opening this vintage doll? The box is mashed up. So you can see this kind of pattern they've put on here. Very cute. So I actually had to open this this way. So you can kind of see the box in there. And then you can see the window there. So that's the box opened up. I actually find it interesting how this window kind of includes this archway overlay. Obviously that was a deliberate choice, but I feel like that's kind of not adding anything. I feel like that's kind of detracting, but that's just my opinion on that. If it was like more 3D, I think it might add something, but because it's like flat together, I don't think it really does much there. So here is the uh, insert part where the doll is inside. This is definitely not being removed from the box. Miss these kind of 90s chunky wires. They don't use those anymore. They use the little plastic tags. And there's a stand under there as well. So actually this string here <coughs> is holding all of this into, a, into position there to make this like trail effect. It's weird how she's like off center, but I guess the window at the back is kind of part of it, the display as well. So I've just cut this 20 year old sellotape that is still sticky. <laughs> and I'm just undoing these twisty ties that are very 90s. And this bit is just connecting her hands to the box. So now I'm going to carefully remove this train part. I believe I'm gonna just have to snip a few. Yeah, I'm gonna snip a few of these. And interestingly, she's standing on a box. So she's actually not as tall as this dress makes out. I stand corrected, she is not on a box, she's standing in a box. So that's, I guess, just to give her more stability. Okay, I'm just removing the stand. Join the official Star Wars fan club, so that's just a little promotional thing. I thought that was actually a certificate of authenticity or something. Um, so there's the base of the stand. She's also got a twisty tie holding her legs onto this, so I'm just gonna undo that as well. And there she is. So there she is, out of the box. Um, quite a bit of like dust and stuff. I guess it's an older doll for sure. So the stand is actually in there. So I'll just take that out and attach it to this base. Okay, so I've just had to cut that out of there. Although I'm obviously taking it out of the box, I kind of wanted to respect the packaging a bit. I find it 
it's, a, it's kind of a work of art in itself to design and assemble all of this. But I've just noticed this same kind of logo or print all over the back of the box there that was on the on the red box. I feel like I've not actually seen that emblem before. I, I don't know if I'm just not well versed enough, but I don't remember ever seeing that in the film. Okay, so the stand is like a, a saddle grabber one. So I will assemble that now. Okay, there is the stand built up. And this is like a weird take for this. Um, but this is kind of like a stark reminder to me, like this doll is almost 25 years old and it's literally still packaged as if it was brand new. And it's kind of just reminding me that like everything that you consume, even if you've like thrown a doll away, it still exists in the world, you know, it doesn't just vanish. So um, I'm gonna put her on the stand. I assume it goes this way. So here is a closer look at the doll. Initial impressions is that this is so detailed. I know it, it wasn't a Playline doll, it was a collector's doll. So there probably was a bigger budget for this. Um, but yeah, from head to toe, this is, I can't even see like a loose seam or a stray thread on this. But yeah, there, it is kind of like attached at various places where it obviously wouldn't be like in real life, but it's kind of just to get it to hold its shape. But yeah, from the top, it's got real feathers. I'm assuming these are chicken feathers, but they're very like glossy and shiny. So yeah, there's that. And then this is her face, which kind of does give Natalie Portman, I guess any sort of face sculpt with this paint on it would be very iconic anyway. You would, you know, it's more about the, uh, the, the paintwork than, than the actual sculpt. And then she's got kind of this head scarf on and these like metal pieces and they they actually are metal they're not plastic that's metal as well and that appears to be yeah that's actually glued to her face um so then it's not going to slide off and there's little gemstones embedded in there which is really cute and then on the back of this that's just plain and it's just a separate piece that goes over the top probably pinned here yeah it's pinned or sewn together sorry and this is quite like elastic -y. and then underneath that she's got this um, the gold dress piece so the whole thing is kind of made up of a dress and then this outer cape cloak type thing which is like pinned in the center here sorry i keep saying pinned i mean sewn and then this printed metallic fabric has its own kind of meshy layer on top i don't know what that's called i'm not well versed in fashion sorry and then this has all got lace detail along the bottom and also i was saying from that emblem on the box it actually is all along her dress so she's got one here but also on the reverse, it's all over the base. I don't know why I didn't clock that before. And then when you go up here, this has kind of got a, uh, it's kind of like ribbed. And that is like constructed by like pinching it together and sewing it, I believe. Because it's, it's not like separate pieces, it's all one piece. And then she's got these like wider bell type sleeves, I guess. And then she's got this, <laughs> I'm not sure about this bit, interesting kind of pleated thing going on the back, which I thought would be like to cover a seam, but she's actually got the Velcro up there. It's interesting that it's Velcro when it's um, a collector's doll, not really designed to be taken out of the box. And then there was a notice like, please don't take the clothes off, but they've given you Velcro to do that anyway. So what I might do now is undress her and have a look at all the pieces separately and then take a look at the body and the articulation as well. Sorry, so another detail that I've just missed when I was just about to undress it is this like slight like wavy spiked edge onto this black. Um, and that is like really hard. So I don't know if that's a completely separate material that's been used or if it's got some kind of like glue on it, but that's, a really fun detail and that actually runs all the way 
all the way around the front to this bit here and then it's not not on this lower part so it kind of just stops there so i've just unvelcroed her and it appears she's got this cardboard in here now this can serve two purposes this could either be to help the gown keep its shape um, and a lot of the time this sort of thing is used as well to stop any sort of dyes in the material from dyeing the doll so i'll have a look and see if there is any staining okay so trying to take this off and obviously as i said before this bit is sewn together i'm just going to give it a little snip and then hopefully this can slide straight off okay so i've just snipped those little bits so we slide that off Warning, doll nudity if you're a strange person and you don't like plastic looking like a Barbie doll. Okay, another interesting development. Her hands are so big that I can't seem to safely remove this. Um, does that mean that this was like sewn up on the doll or something? Who knows? We will have a look. In the meantime, I'm gonna chop this uh, cardboard off of the body. I've also noticed that she's got this goes all the way up around her neck as well, because I was trying to turn her head and I was having some trouble, so I realised that it's because there's cardboard everywhere. This really was not meant to be unclothed, but we don't follow the rules. So there's the piece of cardboard that was around her body. And this has little underwear on. And considering this doll was never meant to be undressed, the fact that they gave her underwear is hilarious. Yeah, I'm still trying to get these hands out. However, her head is still super stiff. What kind of... Okay, so it's just like a swivel kind of head. I'm not sure why it's struggling to move. Let's see if it's got a date on the back as well, or is that a Mattel thing? Yeah, I think that must be a Mattel thing only. They normally have like a, a date written on the back, but Hasbro don't do that clearly. Also, I'm sure this was obvious, but if it's not, this doll is completely bald under here. She's obviously got a headscarf on with feathers, so rooting a doll like that would be pointless. And it would alter the shape as well. Part of me thought it might be, just because of the amount of detail in this, but it, obviously it makes sense that it's not. So I've just cut the little threads that were holding that together, and this now sits really nicely. Um, little overview. But what I wanted to show was round the back, there's even more details going on. So Barbie dolls today, they often notoriously are just printed on the front. This is not, is not the same as that because these are two separate material types. This is like metallic type of material under here. And then this is more of like a satiny type material. And then it's got this strange like netting piece at the back, which is multiple layers, two layers of that. Now, I don't know if that's designed to like give the cape bit some more shape, like poke it out a bit, or if that is actually like a movie accurate detail. But either way, I just thought that was a really interesting piece to note as well, because that is not even seen. Um, madness. One thing I have noticed, I don't know if this is like because of age or this was just how it is, but this stand, it's not particularly stable. Um, so as I'm turning it around, it's kind of teetering a bit. Is this bit not in the center either? I'm not sure. So one thing that I didn't clock before as well, I said this was a single piece of fabric, um, but actually it isn't. Uh, it's the same type of fabric, but this has like a cut going all the way up there and it's the same on the other side. So this train piece, this bottom bit is stitched into this long flowing piece like that. So that's a bit of engineering coolness. Again, that is probably actually a movie accurate thing rather than like the doll. And that kind of just gives it more of a, a down and out kind of flow to it. That's very cool. And yet another bit I've just noticed is this triangle at the back middle is its own separate piece as well, which allows it to like fan out more. So you can see where all the pieces are joined there. And then this, all these emblems, are actually embroidered. They're not just printed. That's an embroidered detail. All of them, which is pretty cool. This bit confuses me. I feel like that's not sitting in the middle, but it might just be where it's kind of like skewed in the box. So I am still gonna try and rebody her, but these hands are proving difficult to be able to take the dress off. So I'll just go over the articulation while it's closed. I know it's not quite the same, but um, she's just got a swivel head, but that is incredibly stiff. I'm not sure why, but she does have a swivel in there. 
shoulders, just a regular rolling ball joint, I guess. Nothing in the elbows, nothing in the hands, yeah, sorry, the wrists. But I guess that's to be expected from like a collector doll that's just supposed to stand. Um, and then underneath here, she's got something I didn't expect, which is really rubbery legs. She's got kind of like the bend and snap feel sort of legs. Just a swivel on the legs. They don't actually bend out. That's just because they're rubbery that they're bending, but they just, they just swivel like that. Oh, and they actually do have the little bend and snap. I thought it was just rubber, but she does have bend and snap legs to there. <laughs> she fell. Um, yeah, so she's got the bend and snap legs as well, which is interesting considering she's just supposed to stand. But I guess Hasbro used like a standard body that they had at the time for that. I don't expect that they manufactured this body specifically for this doll. I could be wrong, but, but she seems like an average sort of Barbie doll height. She doesn't seem to be on like a, a teenager body or anything. I could be wrong. Maybe they did manufacture it specifically for this, but I don't think they did. She also has something that I missed. She has a swivel in her waist, which I guess was also quite standard of the era. So when I was saying before, like, oh, that's not quite on the center, but I think it's just because her waist was twisted. But that does mean you can get some sort of slightly more dynamic poses out of it. Obviously she's not gonna be doing anything wild. Another thing I've just clocked is this little beaded headband thing. It's tucked in on one side and it's out on the other. I'm assuming it's supposed to be tucked in. So I might just try and tuck that in without snapping it, hopefully. Okay, as I was trying to move this to get it beneath, uh, it came off. So there's a little nubbin on this and there's a hole in the middle of her forehead. I don't know if that was glued originally or if that is designed to come out, but either way, I'm glad that it has because it means that I can now position it again properly. Something else that I wanted to do uh, with these dolls is create a Natalie Portman head and print it out um, and paint it myself so it can have a more realistic head. But actually, now I'm looking at this, I really quite like the charm of, of this like simple head sculpt. I mean, at the end of the day, it isn't a Hot Toys, but my, my intention was to make it look like a Hot Toys with like a really realistic face and hands. And that's why I wanted to put it on a different body as well. It moved a bit more, but it is a doll. It's not, it's not a, it's not a Hot Toys like collectible figurine. I don't know, I still might do it just to see what we're saying. Cause I might think differently when I see it, but there's something really just cute and simplistic about that face. Um, but yeah, that's her. Hope you enjoyed this quick overview. There may be a part two where I rebody it and rehead, but we will see. Hope you enjoyed the review. So just something of note here. It does say 1999 Hasbro on it. So it, there is potential that this was made for this doll. So there is a bit of staining on there as you can see, but that's pretty minimal considering the age of this. But I guess that cardboard really did help with the uh, protection of the body because it's just on the arm there. So a quick update on this later on this evening, I removed the dress. And I also accidentally permanently removed her head. <laughs> this was like super tight and I just thought, oh, I'll just try and loosen it up a bit. And I twisted it and it snapped. I don't know why I was under the impression that a 25 year old doll would have soft, loose joints uh, when it's never been removed from the box. This isn't the end of the world um, because as I said, I was gonna try and rebody this anyway. I guess that's now definitely gonna happen. But I managed to slip the hands out of these with no problem by just heating the hands up slightly so they were soft. Um, but I was having trouble getting them back on. But yeah, now she's definitely gonna need a fresh body. Uh, also, another thing I found out, <clears throat> I'm gonna try and heat this head up to take that piece out. But as I mentioned before, this sort of like headband, oops, this headband connects with the little nubbin like that. But actually these ear pieces are also on little pegs, which is a good thing because, see that? It means I can heat this up without putting any of this metal into the, into the heat as well. So in preparation for the new body that I'm now forced to do, I'm just taking the like headscarf bit off. This is actually glued quite strongly onto this. So hopefully this could be cleaned up. It's not ripping the fabric, it's just leaving like a weird residue on there. There's a few loose threads on there, but mostly it's just... Okay, new curveball. There's like a slot 
in the back of the head where all these feathers are obviously stuck in. So we're gonna just see how far we get with that. So there she is. This is the Black Travel Gown 1999 Portrait Edition. Uh, stay tuned because I also have the, the Senate gown with like the Mongolian headpiece that I'll be reviewing. And then hopefully I will be doing a um, rebody and rehead of both of them to put more realistic head on. So hope you enjoyed and hope you watch the next one. Bye.